There he is. What up, man? <laughs> What's good, my guy? Bro, dude, a crazy day, bro. Crazy day, but a good day. I can't complain. Love to hear it. Love uh, to hear it. How are you doing, bro? You know, can't can't complain, man. You know, I mean, uh, out here at a facility like earlier than I've ever been, you know. So you're getting the swing of things, new org, new. I mean, from top yeah. to bottom. So it's a fresh start all around for everyone. So Shit. definitely a new field and a new experience for sure. Dang, are you in Lakeland? Yeah, I've been here for for two weeks now. Dang, early. Yeah, man. Bro. I got. Bro, I got back from, they actually wanted me out here earlier, but uh, I was like, hey, man, like, I'm going to be out of the country. Like, I went for, I hadn't been to Jamaica with my fam in, like, 10 years. So, I was like, hey, man, I want to be out of the country. Is there any way we can push that back? They're like, all right, as soon as you get back, you guys. So, I was back in Miami for a day, got in the car, and then, and then oh, whipped uh, it over here and, I, and hit the ground running. Yeah. Wow, bro. That's that's quick, bro. That's quick. So literally from yeah. the minute you got hired, they were like, today, like be here yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, if you can get here tomorrow, we want you here tomorrow. <laughs> that type of deal for sure. Yeah, so they're 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 off and running quick and early, man. That's good. That's good. That means something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and the fact that you know, I mean, it's again the new GM, newest new AGMs, you know, from from leadership perspective. So they're trying to you know hit the ground running, especially since we have the third pick and the thirty seventh pick, like right off the bat. So they're trying to, yeah, they're they're not playing any games for sure. Wow, man, I love that. We're gonna get more into that later, but I wanna first and foremost, I wanna tell you, bro, do you see it? Uh, do you see a little number, the the numbers going on, like the that it's recording? Yo, trust me. <laughs> T- Torrente told me oh, about it. <laughs> I, every time somebody comes on, I say, please, please, just look. If it's if anything pops up, do not touch it. Tell me, stop. It doesn't matter how the conversation is going. Stop it right there and then. Um, because, bro. Is there a number I should look out for? No, no, no. Or, you know, I see the clock That's running. it. As long as the clock's running, we're good. If it stops running, right, we're, we're in trouble. <laughs> no, right, no. Did, did you see, I posted the video with Torrente anyways. It was crazy. It's literally 45 minutes, and then the rest of it is me like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, hey, man, you got... You got me behind Romy and Torrente, man. That's a t- those are tough acts to follow. You got Torrente talking about million dollar home sales, and you got a big leaguer. I'm like, <laughs> no, bro. Hey, you have you have a great resume, brother. You have a great resume and a very interesting story, yeah, brother. You. So, and you know, one of the things, just so you kind of have an idea as well, like, I want people to believe that it's possible, right? Not every road is the same. I know we all might have started with similar dreams. But the road to success is uh, my boy JC. When I had him on, he said it. It's like, you know, the, the, the road to success goes all over, all different highways, all different paths. But we have something down in Miami. Like, I don't know if it's just the hustle, the, the heart, the grit that, like, we just don't stop. You know, we just don't stop. And, I, and again, we're going to get to it, but I even saw it on your resume. Like, you were... You, I think you were with the Dolphins, but at the same time, you were coaching at Columbus. Like, you were doing two, three things at one time. And, like, that's just what we do on a daily basis. Like, Facts, we don't, bro. We don't know how to stop. So, I want to be able to motivate other kids to, you know, even if baseball doesn't work out. And if it does work out, like, just work hard at it, bro. Just work hard at everything. You Amen. Do Amen. Keep going. So, all right, bro. So, Miami kid. And now you're a scout for the Detroit Tigers, right? But, like, let's get into everything in the middle, brother. I want to hit it all. I want to hit it all. Uh, let's do so it. So talk to me about the beginning, brother. T- talk to me about when you fell in love with the game, if that was your first love, how was it growing up in Miami, and, and kind of who pushed you or who motivated you to kind of fall in love with the game? Well, man, uh, it it was definitely the first love for sure. Um I mean, my dad was definitely the biggest proponent in that for sure. Uh, I mean, he played for a little bit in high school, but nothing too serious. He ended up uh, going back to Columbus and like coaching JV and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it made it easier being, you know, the the younger brother right from the get go, and my <laughs> older brother being the guy who's, you know, you know, little brothers always chasing, you know. And I mean, countless other little brothers can can attest to that, you know. So you're always trying to. You're always trying to keep up. You're always trying to be able to play like with, 
with his boys and show that you can compete mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, I mean, it started at Kendall Boys and Girls Club, man. Uh, T-ball, you know, uh, playing with uh, with with guys that I still talk to today. And, you know, it, it goes from there to uh, playing travel ball with, you know, now that I look back on it, um, the first travel ball team that I ever played for, like when, you know, when we were younger, that was when travel, like, you know, going to St. Augustine, yep. you know, all these tournaments, Triple Crown, all that. Uh, you know, I ended up playing with a bunch of guys that ended up, you know, they do either playing high school ball at a high level or ended up playing D1 ball. Um, I mean, Mandy Alvarez was on that team. He's AAA with the Yankees. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've, you know, got other guys that played at Florida Christian, St. Brendan, Gulliver, you know, uh, Mike Vinson was on that team and he went to Florida and he, he ended up here in Detroit as well. Uh, so I, one thing always led to another, man, like good teams, good being around good people, great coaches. And then it's like what you're saying earlier, man, that Miami community for, I don't know, for some reason, man, like uh, it's, it's definitely a different kind of community to where people can, you know, you meet so many people along the way and, you know, you're always, you know, I never thought like got playing against guys on other teams. I was like, oh no, I hate that guy. Or, you know, it's man, Hey, like. This guy's good, man. Like I'm trying to be, I'm just trying to be as good as I'm trying to compete, yep. you know, you know, get it. And then that kind of mindset from, from that, at those adolescent years to, to getting into high school, you know, and high school ball down there. Like when we were playing, I mean, like, how many names could you rattle Ooh. off? Like that are like, that are big leaguers, you know? Um, I mean, and you just you were just trying to make varsity, you know. You weren't worried about making like you weren't even thinking about like, oh, am I going to get drafted at high school? You're like, man, am I am I going to even be able to play on varsity, you know, or am I going to get stuck in freshman ball, JV? So uh, that just focusing on you know your guys and the people you're playing with allow. I felt like it, it freed up a lot of people, not including myself, to where it's just like, man, you know, look. Let's play for the boys, man. Let's go get a state title, you know, and then everything else that follows after that, it's it's icing on the cake. So and it's it's crazy because just hearing you say and tell you tell kind of that beginning part of your journey, it's just so similar to so many people that have done it before you in Miami too. And we're just so lucky. I I don't know what it is, man. Like I don't know where it comes from, but like I said earlier there's just this like grit about us and like just careless like craziness that we do things like just at another level and like we we're surrounded by so many people that have that same mentality and I think that's I don't know what do you think like really motivates us to to just push through because even for, for perfect example somebody that went to Columbus with you you talk about like JV this that like Brian Garcia, Brian Garcia didn't play yeah. varsity till his junior year, bro. I make fun of him all yeah, the time. Yeah, and he wasn't even a starter. He was our closer. He was a guy coming out of the pen behind Ryan. Yes, Garrett. Ryan bro. Garrett, like, yeah. And Ryan Garrett ends up at the yeah, U bro. eventually, but like, yeah, like it was just a competition. Like, I, I think I did it. Uh, I put it on one one of the posts, like iron sharp and iron. And from and I don't think many people understand how serious baseball was at such a young age, like. When did you feel like pressure of baseball? Like t- you tell me, like when, when did you feel it? I, so it wasn't even with me, honest to God. So like, I, I remember, uh, so we, uh, me and my older brother, we, we were, we were track and cross country people mm-hmm. on top of playing baseball as kids. Cause that's like my, my mom is Jamaican. So she's big into track and the summer Olympics mm-hmm. and all that. So, I mean, from day one, that was like, uh, something that we did outside of baseball from, from the get go. So, oh man, like it, man, it's, it's hard. It's hard to put it into words sometimes, man. It's, it's truly crazy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like give it some justice, but I don't know if I can, if I can like put a, put some, put a finger on it. I, yeah. I, yeah. You know what it is? I think that we take it for granted because that's all we knew. Like we've never had yeah. to put it into words, but if you talk to anybody else from any other place, it wasn't that serious, right? Like definitely not. Yeah. But like, when did you did you did you know you wanted to, like? So obviously you did cross country, did baseball as well. But when wasn't baseball an actual job for you? So it became like it's 
it became a job after high school. So like, it, like the, the, the seriousness started with my older brother when he got to Columbus and it was like our head coach at the time, Joe Weber, who's still mm-hmm. there. You know, my brother, he went up, he went up to him and he's like, Hey man, like I want to run track and, but I also want to do baseball. But in, in South Florida, those seasons are yep. at the same time. So <laughs> Webb was like, Hey man, yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. As long as you don't miss any practices. <laughs> So my other brother looked around. He's like, yo, is, is that even possible? So it was kind of like a wake up call for him. Like, all right, like, hey, I probably got to pick one, yeah. especially with, with these two. So then I got to experience that through him. So it was like, all right, you know, now here we go. Yeah. But then, you know, you get, you get with your boys, you know, you're, you're, you're with those guys every day in the classroom and stuff like that. And it takes off like that. The, the seriousness kind of goes away for the decision part of it. And then you're, you just get to playing and then I'm sure you can attest to it too. You get to, you get to the collegiate level and then that, you know, that seriousness kind of sets in to where it's like, man, like, all right, here we go. You know, like, man, I've been watching these guys all my life. Like, you know, going to UN baseball camps when we're growing mm-hmm. up and stuff like that, getting, getting coached by, you know, all the guys that we idolized and we watched on TV, you know, and then it's, all right, we're here, man. It's, t- it's time to go. Let's see, see what happens. But, you know, that's when you learn that it's, you know, it's not always what you're putting into it. There, there, there are outside circumstances that and outside forces that not only affect you and your playing career, but also how you're processing things mentally and, you know, how, how you're, you're taking care of your body and, you know, the countless other things that go into being a, a collegiate athlete. Yeah. So definitely. that's definitely that the the college level was definitely that step to where it, like it was a seriousness to to the game for sure. So if when you were in high school and you were going through the recruiting process, like how I could imagine it was a little different, right? Because or where where did you want to go? Put put it that way. I'll ask you. Where did you Bro, want to go? I want to do. Hey, if we're being real. I mean, I wanted to go to the. I U. mean, I, I, on, sorry, like, I almost was... assumed that I wanted to ask you first, but like, I, I, I've never talked to anybody that didn't when they were a kid, right? Especially our age. Yeah. Especially when it's it was hard. Ari's, yeah, like, man. I mean, think about the guys we watch. I mean, Ryan Braun, John dude. Jay, the Weeks brothers. Come on, man. Uh, yonder, uh, Danny and David Gill, Yonder, yeah, Yasmani, yep. like Yonder hitting balls on top of the parking garage, <laughs> like, and it's just like, bro, like, who are these people? Like, how, like, can I play college yeah, ball like with guys hitting the ball like that? Like, you know, it's <laughs> so. Go ahead. The recruiting process actually started with, uh, again, I got, I got to give props to my older brother, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar mm-hmm. with the selective recruiting trips that, that people started to do, right? So my brother was going to go his junior year, but a week before uh, he was supposed to go, he got mono. <laughs> so he couldn't go. So I think Lazaro Giannis, I think he's a scout with the Brewers mm-hmm. now. Um, he was running He was running the whole show. And then the following year was my sophomore year. And he was like, hey, you know, Nick's already going somewhere. He's already kind of found his footing. So if you want to send Louie, like, you don't have to really pay anything else. Like, you could send him on the trip and I'll, it'll carry over. Mm-hmm. So I went my sophomore year, you know, on this bus trip. Started at the U, you know, we're, we're in the, mm-hmm. that meeting room on top of, on top of, I think it was like, uh, I think it's the third base dugout. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. So. We're in there and then we just hop on a bus. I'm with, you know, Rennie Rodriguez and like all these guys from Southwest and, you know, uh, Florida Christian, all these guys. And we take off straight drive to like North Carolina and Virginia. So the first stop or our first game was at Virginia Tech, right? I throw a couple innings and then one thing leads to another and then they're, they're, they're all over me, right? So then it was just like, bro, like, I guess. <laughs> I got a D. I got a ACC school, D one school, like trying to get me off the bat. I was like, man, like, is this is this even real? You know, like it, it's because you're not again from what we just talked about. You're not even thinking about that. You're just trying to, you know, show that you can compete with the best of them, you know, and just let the chips fall where they may. So then, you know, one thing leads to another, and then you know, I end up a hokey, and you know, for the. 
for better or for worse, I was like, hey man, you know what? I get to go, I get to go back home. I get to play the U at least twice yep. in my career because that's just the way it lined up. So, you know, it was definitely it was definitely a little it was definitely a little bit weird at first, especially on my visit, because me and my dad were, you know, you get to pick your 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 weekends, yeah. right? Like, oh, okay, my official visit. Me and my dad were looking at the schedule or, or the uh one of the assistant coaches, Mike Kunagonas, I think he's uh I think he's a head coach at like Northern Illinois now. He was like, "Yeah, pick any weekend you want." Me and my dad looked at each other. We were like, "The yeah. Miami game." <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, "Oh, for sure." The U plays in Blacksburg that week. It was it was like a Saturday three thirty game. It was it was a no brainer. And that game was probably still to this day. That's one of the best games I've ever attended in Lane Stadium. Um, there was like a. There was like a thousand yards of total offense in that Ooh. game. Uh, yeah, it was Jacory Harris versus Logan Thomas. Oh, man. Uh, it, the game went down to the wire. It was the first time they played Enter Sandman at the end of the game. So it's like the final play. Uh, they got uh, Miami's got five wide, and you know they're playing Enter Sandman right right as they like before they break the huddle. That place lost it, and you know it was it was like man if. This was this was definitely a great sell. Wow, um, bro! You guys like, did, and you picked it. I'm and into you're it. the one that picked that that weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's crazy, man. That's so cool because you would have never thought. I'm sure you probably never thought that that's where you were gonna end up. Like, like I mean, never, not not a not a single thought ever that I'd end up a hokey. Wow, man, that's so cool. And all right, so you're getting to Virginia Tech. Like, did you like? How was was it a culture shock? Was like. Well, oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure every I'm sure every Latin kid that leaves South Florida can attest to this. Like, you go say hi to somebody and you lean in for like the, the <laughs> and the girls are like, "Whoa!" What? And it's like, "Yo, we're not even dating, bro." What are you Why doing? are you kissing me like that? <laughs> it's like I'm just saying hi, man. Like, what? Like, yo, it ain't that deep. <laughs> And you have to cut. Kind of, you have to take a step back. You're like, oh man, like these people have no idea what it's like down there. Oh man, yo, you know what's funny? You say that. I had the same issue, and I went to Miami because did you? No, bro, I swear to you, because all the girls are not from Miami. That's right. A lot of a lot of yeah, uh, northeast, northern girls, northeast, like, uh, yeah, uh, Mass, exactly. uh, Pennsylvania girls, Jersey, all that. So I would go and say, like, you know. I don't know, people that I knew, you know, so I, hey, and then they're like, <laughs> who does this guy yeah, think what he are you is? Doing, bro? Like, <laughs> I was like, bro, I was just saying hello. Like, I don't, I yeah. don't know how to say hi. Like, Yo, this is, yeah, <laughs> I really, I really haven't said like, hello to anybody. Yeah, I've never, I've like, never, differently. I've never <laughs> shaken a girl's hand, bro. I don't know how to say your yeah. girl's hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello my lady uh, hello, hello my lady I yeah. don't know how, to... how, how are yeah. you Very, it's a pleasure dap me up yeah, one time, bro. You know? like what's up what's up i was gonna hit up yo what's good yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah. all right yeah that was the biggest culture thing for yeah. sure and it, it, took, it took a minute to like just i just started doing that hey, yeah 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 hey, nice yeah it's it, like yo what's up man peace <laughs> all right bro so you get to you get to uh virginia tech and how was like how did you see the competition right like how did you how did you adjust to the competition at that level, was it a big difference? Or, I mean, you had been playing at such a high level already. Was it that big of a jump? Uh, not really. I mean, you could probably attest to it, too. It wasn't necessarily the, the, the talent jump. It was more like adjusting to new roles. Because, like, I mean, you're dealing with guys that, you know, they're talking about drafting in the you know, first couple rounds and stuff like that. Um, guys on the mound that have been there for three or four years, established weekend guys. So, you know, you, the mindset was, it's like we, what we talked about, go in there and compete, you know, like go in there and, and try to try to prove that you belong there, prove that you could help the team in any way possibly you can. And if, you know, your role increases, your role increases, you know? So it's funny because my freshman year was actually the most uh, that I threw in my entire college career. Wow. Which, I mean, that doesn't really happen for most people, but – yeah, and that team was that team was crazy, man. Like, uh, I want to say we had 
We had like, uh, I mean, Chad, we had a couple big leaders on that team. I mean, Chad Pinder was our starting shortstop. Uh, Mark Zagunas was, you know, our DH outfielder slash, you know, every other day catcher. Uh, Joe Manaply was our Friday guy. And Jay, you know, those, like, those are three, like, two of those guys are still in the show. And, you know, uh, Zagunas had a cup of coffee there with the Cubs when the Cubs were, you mm-hmm. know, with all those guys in like 16 and 17. So that's not an easy roster to break either. But, you know, it, it really did help looking at, you know, guys like you, guys like, you know, that that I knew that were going to other places, like uh, Degoti going to Long yep. Beach, you know, and look where and look where he ends up, you know. You know, it was – it definitely helped having that – the background that we had to where I could look at other guys even when I started to have doubt settle in, in in any capacity to where it's like, man, you know, these guys are – these guys are going through similar things, man. You know, let's let's keep it going. Let's keep, let's keep trying to work. Let's keep trying to get better. So that – for me, that that freshman year was probably one of the funnest years I've ever had playing baseball. I'm not gonna like even go like from the high school years, you know, being state runner up twice. Like, you know, you couldn't get it done, <laughs> you know. But uh, I mean, going to the ACC tournament, you know, going on a run, you know, going to, you know losing the ACC championship game. It was kind of reminiscent to my high school career. Like, Damn, you know, like so short, you know, like, <laughs> Oh man. Shout out Columbus. Man. Shout out Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Hey man. Hey, the, the explorers, man, it runs deep. Uh, but you know, it was, I mean, great experiences, you know, great people, people that, you know, I still communicate with pretty regularly today. So it, the competition was never the biggest adjustment. Like I never felt like I didn't belong because, you know, I, when I would come home during fall, I would hang out with the guys like you and all the other guys there. You know, when we we would just talk about everything. I I never had anybody, you know, from that level or guys that ended up making it to the show told me that I couldn't play. You know, and I felt like I was, if you know, we were we were always straight up with everyone else. So if I had, if I had that and I had that in my back pocket in the back of my head, I knew that, you know, I had the ability to be there. It was just about, you know, finding, you know, the right, the right spot for me to, to succeed and the right, you know, the right mixture of things to succeed. And it could still get to that point and, you know, not paying out for you in, in your own playing career, but, you know, having, having that support system of the South Florida, those South Florida guys in that community was, was definitely big for sure. You know, you know, I've said that before, man, and I can't believe you brought that up because that is exactly how I feel too. Because when you're, when you're a kid there, and I think maybe this is what we were trying to get to earlier. When you're a kid in Miami and you surround yourself with that type of talent, everybody does think that they can make it. Facts. Like if, if you really think about it, You know, everybody talks about, oh, there's a percentage of people that don't make it. There's a percent. Like, we never talked really about that. That never, that was never even a discussion. But you, the old X amount of people make the shit. Nah. We're like, we're making it. We're we're doing it. We're doing it. it. There was, it was like, it was just blind faith, like pure blind faith that we're like, we're going to make it somehow. Like, Lou's going to Virginia Tech, but he's going to make it anyways. It doesn't matter. Like, we're like, Like you said, the goatee went to Long Beach. I didn't, I didn't even know that was a school. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but uh, he went to Long Beach and, I mean, played. Obviously, it was a great school, but a kid from Miami doesn't know that. Like, So, yeah, it's, and it's a huge yeah, adjustment. Huge huge adjustment. You're going across the country. You can't just go home on the weekend and, you know, and have, yeah. that, have that safety net. It's, hey, you're out here, man. You got, like, you got yeah. to figure it and out. And you too. I mean, you went to a different state, but it was just that – blind pure blind faith i think is what's so different and what's so motivating to people especially down there and i think people all over the world and all over the united states and anybody that's trying to chase this dream i think has to surround themselves with people that want you to succeed that tell you that it's possible right because when you come from a small place not like i mean we're i guess you could say a small place with a lot of people but <laughs> yeah. let's, let's talk about someone someone that comes from another place that doesn't have a lot of people that have seen make it before they don't have that that kind of positive energy but where 
we were in a place where it was like, you're making it. Like the, everybody, like we're all Max. making it, period. We're all in this little thing together. You, there were way too many examples, yeah. you know, like way too many and way too many people that would come back, you know, and it trickles down into, into the guys. That, Say the you name, know, bro. Say the name. Cause that, everybody's, everybody has said one name and you already mentioned them once, but I think you're going to mention them again. Did, did, did I already? You already mentioned the name of somebody that went to Columbus that everybody idolizes and went to the U. Uh, dude. So the funny part is, I just I I was literally on the phone with him uh yesterday. Jay. Yeah, bro. Me too. I was on the phone yeah. with him too. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, the the homie, man. That's big, bro. bro. I mean, the guy is. How does he do it, bro? I said yeah. it with Romy yesterday. Literally, I was on the on the podcast with Romy, and Romy had talked to him a few days before that. Like, how does this guy do it, bro? He's the Godfather, man. He's the Godfather for sure. <laughs> I idolize that man, bro. Like, I want to be like him. Like, not even the – forget I about mean, the baseball career, right? Like, nobody yeah. even talks about that when they talk about Jay because, I mean, obviously he, you know, World Series champion, 10 years yeah. in the big leagues. But, like, what like what can you tell me about Jay, bro? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I it, but, like <sighs> – No, no. I mean, it, you, I mean, you, you, feel, you feel it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's – you talk about somebody like that and, you know, to put it into, like, the scouting terms – 80 person all around like that guy is hall of fame person and who he is how he operates how he takes care of himself the, the family man that he is you know the time that he puts into everything that he wants to do i mean it's it's very inspirational you know it, and then the fact that you know I'm, I'm sitting here at my desk you know the other day and he hits me up he's like yo hey i'm gonna call you in, in like a in like a couple hours and i'm like i bet dude like, <laughs> let's go yeah you know, so I mean, the fact that he got this, you know, this gig with uh, Schumacher in in Miami, you know, that I, that's huge for them. Love the hire, love for them, and you know, the people that he's going to be working with. Uh, but you know, seeing a guy like that come back to Columbus when I was there, you know, and like it was it was a second home for him. He didn't care that he was, you know, going to his old high school and you know, seeing his like the old classmates that were teachers now and talking to kids and stuff like that. You know, it was just normal for him, and that and that stuff trickles down. You you just mentioned Romy, like a thousand percent when he goes to his gym and when he hits, you know. And another guy, another another Columbus guy, when he he does uh, everything over there with Eddie Alvarez, mm -hmm. like when those guys are there, and you know the younger guys trickle in after school and they see them there working out. It's face to face, man. And you see that you're like, man, you know. It's right here. Like I see the things that he's doing, man, like, you know, the guy he's working with is, you know, even though my dad's telling me the same stuff and, you know, I'm driving myself insane because it's my yep. dad, you know, and you hear his <laughs> voice for everything, but you're like, you know, you know, maybe, maybe there's a point to this, you know, maybe I should, you know, keep grinding with the same kind of stuff, you know, and, and then, you know, it clicks and then it, it leads to that, that feeling where it's like, nah, hey, the percentage doesn't matter to me. I'm doing this. Yep. And until somebody tells me that I can't do it, that's when it's over. Cause if not, I'm, I'm not going to stop. And that's, and that's why you don't stop, man. That's what's gotten you to where you're at right now. Is it, it, it's, it's Definitely. exactly why you, you did as much as you, you've been able to do. So talk to me about school now, man, t because you've gotten to a point where you've had not only a, a successful baseball career, but now you've transitioned into a different role in a different chapter of your life. But before we get into Yeah, I'm a suit now. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, so am I, bro. <laughs> behind this behind this iPad is three computers, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Um, I work out just so people still think I'm playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um Hey you guys do yeah. shit, man. But uh talk to me about school and how important that was to you and do you think it helped you? Do you think it put you in a position to uh be more successful did you need it because i know there's different people with different takes on school yeah so for me it definitely it, it it was definitely important because it instilled like you know just the diff the discipline and the monotonous of stuff that i that that i wasn't necessarily like striving to do mm -hmm. you know first love was baseball i know the reason i went to virginia tech was for baseball you know even though that school is incredible yeah right so you know, it really, it really instilled like, hey, man, 
sometimes it's not going to be about what you want to do, right? It's not, it's not necessarily the things that always are going to be, you know, conducive to the things that you are and build you towards a playing career. You know, sometimes you got to show people that, you know, you can, you can do it in multiple facets of your own life. So, you know, and I've also seen it on the opposite end, like my older brother, you know, he's, I mean, he's making countless more, much more money than I am right now. And that dude didn't even finish college. Right. And, you know, it's, it's definitely that, it, that point in your life is definitely a time and a place where it's, you know, you, you truly learn who you are. And, you know, it, for me, it was it, putting it, putting in a perspective of, you know, having something that, that built me into a better person. Right. And then it, that led into everything else. Like, Hey, like, you know, once I graduated, right. And, you know, I didn't have anybody blowing up my phone for the draft and all this other stuff. I, you know, I ended up with like one workout with like a thousand people with the Braves in Orlando, you know, for like one of those random tryout days and stuff like that. So, you know, it really, it really helped me understand like, you know, everything's a learning experience, right? Even though, you know, some might consider it a failure or, you know, some, you know, falling short or however you want to phrase it, you know, it, nah, it's, it's about, you know, b- keep moving forward, keep building, building on top of everything. And the degree was part of that, you know, and, and I'm definitely better for it for sure. Yeah. And, and can you walk me through, hey, this is going to get deep, bro, but Ferente <laughs> said it's all right to get deep. So we're getting deep here. Let's get deep. So like, walk me through the day that, that you were by yourself and and these thoughts started to creep to your head and it was like man maybe this is this is the last day for for the playing days yeah. man that was that was literally uh for me it hit me the last day of the season my senior year at UVA I was like man this could be it. yo I like we ended up uh we ended up getting eliminated that day from like we were trying to sneak into the ACC tournament that last year we we didn't end up getting there and uh, I remember, you know, going through the line, shaking everything, and I didn't even go straight to the locker room. I went, uh, I went into right field, and I kind of just, I sat down, and I was like, you know, I started, to, like, I started to tear up a little bit. I was like, fuck, man, like, you know, this could be it, you know. And I didn't even go out the way that I wanted to go out. You know, I didn't even throw that last weekend. I was kind of just watching my boys grind it out, and you know, and trying to make it. So I was like. Phew. You know, and that was, that was tough. It was definitely tough. And, you know, I was, you know, and then it, it kind of snowballed for a minute too, because after that was the whole, Hey man, like, I still think I got something left in me, you know, uh, somebody try to help me out, you know, and you, you grow up, you go up around people that are, that are scouts and, you know, I've seen you say so you train with little kids, excuse me. Oh, you know, you, you want people to believe in you. You want people to have that you know, that faith in you and to take a chance on you. And that, and that never came for, for the playing side of things. So it was definitely, it was, those were for me, like the really, like the really dark mental times, you know, cause it was like, you know, you know, what the hell do I do now? You know, cause I had never thought, I never thought anything else of other than, you know, a playing career. Right. And then, you know, where I am now and, you know, how, and how I've gotten here is something that I always thought about, you know, that'd be fun to do on the back end if, you know, right situation, yada, yada, yada. But it was always, Hey man, like you were, you're good enough to be here. Let's, let's do it. And when that came, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely like that, that dark, you know, I don't want to say depression. Cause I don't, I don't want to say like, I was, I was severely depressed, but it was definitely like, man, you know, not wanting to, not wanting to really like do anything, not wanting to like go out or see people. It was, you know, like, you know, I, I it, saying what I just said that it shouldn't be like saying that telling myself that I failed at something that I had worked my whole life to get to. So that, that was definitely that, that biggest time, yeah. but you know, it definitely, I, I go back to the support system, man. And you can, I mean, you feel it too. You know, you start, 
start hanging around some of the guys that you've known your entire life, you know, it, I mean, and I'm, I'm super close with Torrente still. Mm-hmm. I, I talk to that guy every day, you know, and that's somebody that finished playing, you know, earlier and, you know, he knew what he wanted to do. And he, I mean, you know, start, I mean, this, everyone can go listen to what, what everything that he yeah. said the other day, you know what I mean? And it's having a guy like that, or, you know, around me, you know, and then, you know, talking to talking to guys like you, Romy, Brian, uh, you know, all the guys that, you know, we grew up around and playing with and against uh, uh, Ricky Eusebio, like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. countless other names to where it's, you know, it's disappointing, but it's not over. Like there's still, there's still plenty of other things that you can allow yourself to do. It's just a matter of being open-minded and having that positive mindset going forward to where you, you know, you can pick yourself off the, off the ground with that support system and keep going. Yeah. Man, that's beautiful. How long how long did it take you to decide, hey, this is where I'm going to take my next step? Like how long did that transition period take till from the minute that you finished playing, the minute that well, after you tried and did those little trials and stuff like that, till you said, "All right, let's flip the switch. Let's start working. This is where I'm going to go. This is where I'm going to start." So that was when, when you mentioned it earlier, when I was working for the Dolphins mm-hmm. and I was, you know, I was, uh, I was teaching and I was coaching at Columbus, you know, hey, being around those kids, those, you know, I, I was, co- I was the head coach of the freshman team, you know, I'm, I'm handling all the pitchers and, yeah. like that, and those you know, kids are bouncing off the walls <laughs> and they're like, yo, you went to Virginia Tech, man, you play D1. I'm just like, yeah. I'm like. You know, it's instill, it was instilling that, you know, that feeling that we had always had, you know, in ourselves. Man. Yeah. And it was, you know, these kids are crazy, but, you know, this is the energy that I remember. Wow. You know, it, it brought it brought a little bit of life back into me. And then, you know, it was it was like a year or two of doing that, you know, hopping around. And I told myself, I was like, you know what? You had talked about, you know, that secondary part of a baseball career before, but you you were, you know, you thought that the only avenue that you could have possibly had that in was if you played, you know, if you would have got that opportunity, you know, and to, to have that energy again around me, it was like, nah, forget that. Like, let's go. Right. So, uh, it was, it was 20 winter meetings, 2018, uh, before the 2019 season, I said, you know what? Screw it. You know, I'm going to the winter meetings. Right. So I bought a plane ticket flew to Vegas. Right. So I only had at the time I had, uh, I had two interviews scheduled. I had an interview with the Marlins and I had an interview with the A's. Right. So I get out there, you know, know, trying to find my bearings. First of all, first and only time I'd ever been in Vegas. Right. So I'm like, yo, this place is massive. (laughs) Like, you know, the, (laughs) Yeah, you know, I'm supposed to fight like uh, the first couple not, the first couple of days. I'm like trying to walk around the hotels, trying to find where anything is. And like, what I didn't realize is that the winter meetings is a wild card. Everyone's walking everywhere. The the important stuff are happening in all the rooms upstairs. So I'm just like, yo, wh- like, where do I go? Like, is there an office where I go? Am I about to have you know my interview right here next to the blackjack table? <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Yo, but it, it, yo, legit, it was like that, man. So like, I, the, the funny part about it is, and uh, man, shout out Columbus again. And even before Columbus, cause, um, uh, we've known this family for a ton of, a ton of years, even before that, uh, with my older brother. But so I threw it on my Instagram story. I was like, you know, I'm not like, I just took a picture of Vegas. Next thing I know, I get a text from Javi Salas. Bro, I'm on the way back from from California. I'm stopping in Vegas. Like, yo, let's go eat. Say less, brother. Wow, bro. So, Shout out Javi, bro. Yeah, bro. The Salas clan. No man. way, dude. So I end up linking up with Javi, right? We're walking around. He's asking me everything. I'm telling him about the interviews that I had. I'm trying to find my bearings. He goes, What are you doing? I was like, I'm interviewing for a couple video jobs. You know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get into, you know, player dev. I'm trying to be, you know, help out with the video department. I have experience with all the stuff that they're using. I feel like that'd be a great entry point. He goes, all right, brother, say less. So he hits me with the, he, he hits me with a text or he starts like hammering his phone. He's not telling me what he's doing at dinner. He's like, he's like all right, I got you. Don't worry. He ends up hitting up uh, his former video guy in double A when he was in Biloxi. 
right? Who was the video court, the minor league video coordinator at the time. He goes, yo, I got a guy here. He's interviewing for like, he's already interviewed with a couple teams. Like you need to interview this kid. So the guy, next thing I know, I get an email from the Brewers. Like, Hey man, like meet us here tomorrow. Yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, next thing you know, I'm doing an interview with the Brewers in the sports book of the Mandalay Bay. Like we're at the one of the tables, there's like a thousand, you know, different sports games going on. But, you know, I'm interviewing with a, a big league club to to try to get, you know, a video gig, you know, and try to just, you know, start the, the whole journey. So then, you know, one thing leads to another. And then I, you know, I leave the winter meetings. And then a week later, I get a call from the Brewers. They're like, hey, man, like, we really loved your interview. Like, we, we you know, we want to get you out here. Say less, man. Like, let's do it. Wow. No way, man. Yo, if that's not a Miami story, I don't know what it is, yeah, bro. Yeah, hey, if, facts, My man. My dog threw Yo, it on it Instagram was... how he said, I got you, bro. Say less. <laughs> wow, man. I started putting two and two together, and I had to, like, stop to let you tell the rest of that story. But I was like, I know how this is going to end, bro. <laughs> wow dude that's so Crazy, bro. sick man that is so so sick and like then that goes back to again bro the brotherhood that again columbus has it like no other right like i hear about it all the time and like it i feel like it would have been cool to just see it from the inside you know like behind that wall yeah. and see what the because i'm yeah. a i'm a public school kid <laughs> from miami and i was like dude i used to hear about it but Andy, Andy Suarez used to tell me all the time, like, dude, this yeah. is this is the best like brotherhood you could ever imagine, right? And then even more so, right? Us, the Miami baseball, like family, really. It's almost the same thing, man. It really is because those guys, like the those guys that go from Columbus to the U, it's almost like it's it's yeah. it's like that, and the the culture there is the same, and that's been going that's been going on since before. You know those kinds of guys are rolling through that locker room, wow. so it, it, it's definitely that that kind of experience for sure. Dude, that is so cool, man. That I, I I I obviously didn't know that story, and that is so cool to see, and especially that it was Javi too, man. It couldn't have been. Yeah, but it, listen, and it's right? all about taking a chance. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Like you know that that would have never happened if I just didn't decide. Hey, man, like let's go for it. Like let's go to like fly out there. Like everyone says that if you're gonna if you're gonna you know show people that you're about it. Go like go, wow! Like, did you take a chance? Did you think twice before posting that Instagram pic? And like, what was <laughs> a what was bit, the yeah. idea behind it? Was it just like, yo, I'm in Vegas, this is dope, or was it like, damn, maybe like, was it a shot in the? Nah, shot it was. Nah, like, it was definitely the first. Yeah. It was definitely the first one because I was like, yo, this place is <laughs> yo, crazy, is man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, and then, man. You know, like you know, because you know, I would, I had to take like a it. Would, it was like one of the outsides of the hotel because, you know, when you're walking around inside of there, you know, everyone under the sun that you see on TV is like walking through the lobby of that hotel. Yeah. They got the MLB network table on one end of the floor. You got Maddie, Matt Vaskirgin and, you know, Lauren Shahadi and all these people doing the show. You're like, bro, like, I'm, I'm just not trying to get caught on camera, <laughs> like walking by, like, you know, and then uh, it's crazy. Like, you know, you're walking and I'm, you know, just walking down the hall to to this interview that I had with the Pirates, like, the, the next day. And then I just see this mountain of a human being. And I take a second look, and it's freaking Bruce, Bo uh, Bruce Bochy. Yo, that's a big I'm dude, like, bro. <laughs> Yo, his head's <laughs> huge, real, too, man. bro. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Yo. Yo, I was like, Yo, this guy is massive, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> It was truly crazy. It was crazy. So like it was it was definitely a surreal experience from top to bottom. Oh man. Yo, is the timer still going? Just make sure we're just Yeah, uh, we're, we're at, uh 4403. Perfect, perfect. We're good. We're good. We're yeah. good. Damn, bro, that's so so cool. Bro, I remember so I went to see Andy play in Arizona. I was I was rehabbing in Arizona and Andy was playing against um the Diamondbacks and he's taking BP, which was the funny part. So we're, yeah, so I we're on the him taking BP. <laughs> Yo, so um, yo, he, hey, hey, he's got he's got a hit in the big leagues, bro. He's he does, got a hit he in does. the big leagues. Um, but uh, so I'm there and we're we're talking and all of a sudden Bochi comes out of the dugout, and I go, Andy, no shot, that's him, bro. He goes, dude, that's him. 
Dude, that was one of the <laughs> biggest. It looked like a door was walking, bro. Like a real, yeah, like a bro. huge. And then, of course, like his head. I remember seeing his head, and I'm like, like, yo, I got ranked on my head all my life, bro. I still do. But, dude, he's doubling up, bro. Like, <laughs> like he could take me for a ride. Bro. Yeah, bro. Dude, that was impressive. Oh, that's funny that you said that, man. Because because I had the same same impression when I saw him. I was like, dude, this is he's not real, bro. This is a different type of human. Yeah, it's like, bro, this this guy's a human too, <laughs> bro. So so take me to now, take me to when w- w- t- talk about your first week. Talk about getting out to was it AZ? Did you go out to AZ first? So yeah, yeah. so went out to AZ, um, and they're obviously in Maryville. Right. So, but uh, they put a, they put everyone up in the Glendale area. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, I think it's like the Holiday Inn behind the Cabela's right oh, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, across from the White Sox. Uh, what's that too, place? The White Sox, yeah, yeah, yeah. The White Sox and the Dodgers yep. are right there. I forget what the name is. Uh, that area is called the, like Dang, the whole mall. Right. Area. Dave and Buster's and. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All yeah, that yeah. stuff. Um, but it was it was crazy, man. Like. You know, you get there and, you know, you're just trying to, you're just trying to, you know, I don't want to be the guy, you know, who's, you know, talking, knowing everything, this and that. But then, you know, you start running into people that, you know, you played against, right? That they're on the other side and they're like, yo, what are you doing here? Right? Um, So, he's not with, he's not with Milwaukee anymore. But at the time, uh, there was this guy, uh, Bubba Derby. He was a pitcher at San Diego State that I played summer ball with. He's walking in the locker room and he sees me. He's like, dude, what the hell are you doing here, man? I'm just like, yo, <laughs> starting the journey, man. Yeah. Like, yo, what's good? Hey, if you need me, let me know. Uh-huh. Like that kind of deal. Um, but it was it was great, man. Like, you know, being in the video room, you know, it's a, it's a definitely an entry level type of position. But at the same time, you know, you're meeting so many people like uh, David Stern's a GM, you know, just walks in one day into the minor league video room. And he's just like, what's up, guys? You know? Uh, how how you doing? You're like, dude, what's the GM doing in the minor league video room? Like saying hello to guys that he's probably never going to see again in his entire life. But, you know, guys like that, uh, the field coordinator over there at the time, Charlie Green, who I didn't even know at the time, uh, he went to Killian. No way. Right? Yo, so he he's going around there. He's like, he, he was a little more involved in minor league video, obviously mm-hmm. being the field coordinator, he's trying to, you know, you know, get a rapport with everyone so he can communicate at a, at a quicker pace. So he goes, Oh, where are you from? I'm like, Oh, I'm from Miami. And he, he was like, he gave me that nod. He's like, what high school you go to? And I go, Oh, I went to Columbus. He goes, ah, <laughs> he's like, oh, you, you're one of those guys. Hating right? already. Like, huh? He was yeah, hating already. He's like, what? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? He goes, ah, oh, you guys, you guys had everything. Uh, you, like, you know, I was one of them too. I, I was a hater too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it, you know, it's relationships like that and stuff like that, that allowed me to, you know, to be a little more, you know, free and, you know, uh, adjust a little bit quicker. Right. That's awesome. So ended up in the pioneer league, right. You, you were there. bro. So I was, I did, I did, dude, I did extended brother. Right. <laughs> And then I went, and then I went to Colorado Springs, right? And then me, uh, or so like we were, we were the vibes that year. And then the closest team to us was Grand Junction, which was like five hours away. <laughs> so like, I'm traveling the Northwest. I'm like, bro, some of these places are out there, man. Like, like, so, uh, like, uh, Great Falls, Idaho, bro. Like, like nightmare fuel bro oh, and that's nothing against the people that live there but it's just like yo like we you had to drive it was like nothing 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 oh there here's a town with a minor league team dude it you know can you even believe people live there like that's what i used to think when i would go bro through. i i couldn't believe it i mean everything there was i mean the views were insane like driving through Wyoming and Montana and all these and all these places, it was it was truly beautiful. Not I I can't knock it like that. It's a beautiful area of the country, but I mean, being you know from Miami, half yeah, Latin, exactly. half Caribbean guy from yeah. Miami, it's like yo, what am I doing? What is this? Cause this is not where I'm from, bro. <laughs> exactly, man. It's like yo, this is nice and all, but like I could never live here, man. I need I need a body of water yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I feel trapped, bro. I'm landlocked here, bro. Like yo, where am I going? 
Exactly, man. Exactly. Oh, bro, that's cool. So you got to live the minor league life. By by no means did you get to skip out on that oh, part. Oh, man. That's for sure. No, no, no. So, yeah. I mean, I did – so my first year was with them. I did the Pioneer League and, and did all that, which, by the way, best thing about Grand Junction is that purple ice cream they got at the stadium. I don't know what it's called or whatever flavor it is, but that, that stuff was gas, gas. <laughs> um, so I went there, and then the next year, um, I mean, speaking of Jay, oh. right, he calls he calls me over his house after that year's over, right? And he's like, hey, man, like, I would c- cruise over the crib. Like, let's hang out. Let's talk. Like, I want to hear about your experience, right? So I talked to him about everything, you know, uh, kind of the whole spiel. And then he goes, do you want to keep doing it? I was like, yeah, I really haven't heard back from the Brewers yet either. So, like, I really, like, uh, you know, I'm thinking about doing the whole process again. He goes, nah. He goes, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you in touch with a guy that I met with Kansas City. And then you can interview with him and see how it goes. So then two weeks later, you know, I'm, I forget, it's uh, one of those hitting facilities right there on Bird, uh, one of those cages. It's not the one that, uh, I forget who, who like owns the place but like jay was hitting there one day oh uh, uh, 365 um yeah uh, San Pedro. yeah yeah so um uh, he caught like i he tells me to, to cruise over there one day next thing i know I, i'm getting a call from this guy uh nick relic with the kansas city royals phenomenal dude he's no longer with him but that guy is amazing right so i end up interviewing with him he's like hey man you know yeah, your interview went great, and you know I'm also hearing great things from not only Jay but other people that know you, and you know the you know the connections you know that from your resume that I can I can track down. So, you know we want to get you out here as well, dude. It's awesome, man. Like let's do it. So I get out there, and this is 2020. So like I'm out there for spring. I was supposed to go to A Ball in Lexington. Oof. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm gonna be in Kentucky. It would have been you know. So it would have been a dope, it would have been a dope vibe. And then, you know, obviously everything happened the season gets canceled, go back home, yada, yada, yada. So then the past two years I get back and they're like, Hey, you know, instead of sending you to a ball, we're going to stick you in triple A. Right. I was like, all right, bet. (laughs) Right. So then I get out there and then now all of a sudden, you know, it's not only that connection that I had with Jay and, you know, me getting to know Relic over the year and talking to him, you know, for a decent amount. Then all of a sudden it's P. Grifol, he's the bench coach. Tozar's a hitting coordinator. You know, it's uh, like, it's, uh, those guys have known me since I was a little jit, you know, running around with it while they were coaching my older brother. It's like going to Continental Park and, you know, me, comiendo mierda, yeah. like running around the backfield and it's, JP Arden, Tibia, Tony Sanchez, Alex Garabedian, and then my older brother doing catching lessons with Pete. Jeez. Right. And then the next day it's, hey, we're we're going to hitters hang out or hardball or whatever, and we're gonna go hit with Tozar. You know, that's like it, 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 those are you're never arguing with your dad at that point to like or whatever. It's like, yeah. all right, say less. Like, when's the next time we're going? So those I mean, having those guys there too was for the past two years was you know, uh, immeasurable, mm-hmm. really. So, and then, you know, obviously AAA is AAA. You know, you're working with guys that, you know, that have, I mean, t- talent that I wish <laughs> that, that you know, that, that I could, you know, just have, like, natural ability. You're like, man, like, you know, you're being around some of those guys and then, you know, just being a part of that process. And then they start feeling you out. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, who's – Who's this random kid? You know, because you're in the locker yeah, room, yeah, and yeah. You're, 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 it's that's you know what's what's the, what's the best way to describe it? It's like that's that's the trial by fire, right? You're gonna you're gonna find out who somebody really is in, oh, in the yeah. locker room setting for that long, right? Because it's a long time yeah. every single day. Facts, facts. Yeah, every day, maybe sometimes nine to twelve hours a day. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna get to know guys, right? So. You know, obviously, and then the past couple of years in Omaha, I mean, super, super blessed to have like the stabs that we had. We had a great, like, we had a great, I had a great relationship with the guys that I was working with. Uh, even the guys that were in and out there, the coordinators uh, from, 
from meeting uh, JJ Piccolo in spring in Arizona, their GM down to, you know, the position coaches that we had, you know, to, to our coordinators, you know, everyone there, you know, it's, they're a very close knit group of people over there for sure. So it definitely helped, you know, being open and, and being, you know, just being myself, you know, cause I knew that, you know, if somebody came to me for help, like I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to shy away from it. I wasn't going to be the guy like, Hey man, like I'm not going to, you know, step, step out or ah, I really know it's like, Hey, I'm here to help you guys, man, whatever you need. Right. And then it, it keeps going from there. Dude, I know that you, that it's, you mentioned that and it's so true because I've seen that before people kind of having that, like, ah, sorry, man. Like, sorry, you know, yeah. but you've see, like, now that you've gotten through your story a little bit more, like you've seen that every step of the way you've, somebody has, has lend out their hand. So when you're yes. in that position, Facts. you're not scared to lend out that hand either. Right. And like, even going back to the last one is, you know, Jay lending out his hand. Bro, how long was Jay with the with the with the Royals? Tell like me how, half tell a year. Tell me how long Jay half was. Literally three, four months, maybe, bro. Yeah, maybe. And this man that. just made a call like that, said, yo, interview my boy. That's yeah. it. So, Crazy, man. You know, I try to tell everybody I try to come across, and like that's one of the messages that I feel like is very common within these conversations. I mean, I I hope to have it with more people, but you know, the people that are tight knit knit in our group there in Miami, that everybody's not scared to help each other, man. Like why, why, why why not help the ones next to you, man? And we continue to build each other up. And it is, it's unbelievable. The things that we can accomplish when we lean on each other, man. Amen. Like there's so many great people and we surround ourselves by so many great people that continue to push us forward. And, that is, I think, what separates somebody that becomes successful and somebody that doesn't. Like, what do you, what do you think the definition really of like success is, bro? Like, if you were to kind of put a put a word to it or or a, a phrase or something, like, what is success, man? Because I try to think about it all the time, and I just don't know what we're chasing, but we're chasing something. Yeah, I mean, like, what's your goal? What's your goal? Where do you want to be? We're like, what's What's success look like for you? I mean, if if I had to put it into like a, a position, obviously, you know, it's to you know, to run uh, run an org yeah. to a certain capacity. You know, every I feel like you know people that that try to chase this journey, regardless of every, you know, it's the kind of you know uh, what's this uh, what what's this J Cole verse? Uh, if you, if you don't aim too high, then you've aimed too low. Yep, like. Hey man, like Pitbull, Pitbull too. Pitbull like said something like that. You shoot for the moon and fall on a star or something like that. Yeah, bro. Like, why not, man? And if you find if you if you don't if you end up don't reaching that quote unquote successful goal, you'll you'll probably find yourself in a place where you're fulfilled in what you're doing, and you know you're you're making an impact on other people's lives. And if you're doing those kinds of things, you know that's when you hear all these successful people say that, you know, that are millionaires and stuff like that. They were like, Hey man, like the money isn't everything, you know? Cause if, it, if the money was everything, you know, people, I mean, I don't want to put it like this, but like, you know, people like Anthony Bourdain, you know, would still be here if it was all about the money, you know, those, those are those sh- his example and, and countless others like that have, that have gone down that path. You know, if, if it was all about the money, the cars, you know, the clothes and, you know, having a, a a dope crib, like, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be a little bit of emptiness in you. Right. So if you're, you said to try to put it into a word, I'd say the best way to describe it is like community, like finding, finding your community, finding your, your community. And then the purpose, your own purpose and your own drive will, will lift you to provide for that community. And then your your you yourself will benefit from it countless ways that you could possibly imagine and you couldn't even think of before when you when you're trying to to live this way that's dope bro so so let me see if 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 i if i understood it correctly but there's more it's almost like there's more passion and love in the people around you and the 
the process of getting to where you're going, not just the goal of where you're going to get. Is it? Is yeah. That- I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the, the, the Kobe mindset, you know, fall in love with the process. Yep. There you go. Don't fall in love with the results, fall in love with the process. Yeah. And is it, and it was, it was funny when I was talking with Romy yesterday, we were talking about his story. He was going through his story and he was, he was kind of like reminiscing and being like, wow, I never even stopped to think about it because he's been so locked in in the process, which is what keeps him sane, what keeps us all sane. And it's, and it's got him to where it is yeah. today, man. You know, like a dude that's on a team that has a shot to make real noise this year and a guy that he's going to get a, a ton of ABs with this year. So like it's – yeah. It's one th- one thing leads to another. Yeah. You never know, Bro, man. So, you so never know. Romy, Romy talked about – one of the things he talked about was his crazy year, the year after COVID, right? 21. Was it 21, right? Yeah. 21. Um, but you got to witness, if I'm not wrong, another young kid from Miami, and I need to get on this podcast as well, that had an absolutely insane year with the Royals. Oh, uh, did you MJ. see? M- were you there for MJ's like ridiculous so year? I, yeah, so I was. Uh, that was the. So we had him on the back end. Okay. Of that of that year, yeah. right? So, so that first half of the year, so a lot of a lot of the people in AAA were like, "Yo, y'all got a four A team here, right?" So it's like we had. I mean, we had Emmanuel Rivera, who's with the Diamondbacks mm-hmm. now at third. Then. Um, we had Ryan McBroom, who's playing overseas now in Japan. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn was up and down with us at, for for a little bit of time, you know. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the year, it's hey, Nick Prado's here. Hey, Bobby Wood Jr. is coming. So then those guys are here, and then it's like, oh, okay, MJ Melendez is coming now. Now it's like, oh, brother, like we're, you know, this is this team's legit as hell. And then I didn't even mention the pitchers. You got Daniel Lynch, Jackson Coar, you know, uh, this other guy, Ronald Bolaños, like a, a Cuban, top Cuban guy. It's like, brother, like this, te- this team's not bad. Like this team, this team, you know, they got some arms. And then, you know, another Miami guy that pops up in there that, that I think, you know, I think is going to be a big leaguer one day is uh, Andres Nunez, a kid from, went to McCarthy and yeah. he went to FIU and, you know, he's, he's there. He's in Triple A. He, you know, he's he's you know pounding the door trying trying to get there, but that I mean that year was crazy, man. Like MJ's hitting the ball out everywhere. Bobby's making insane plays left and right. Yeah, uh, Kyle Isbell was there. Now he's probably going to be their starting center fielder now after they traded Michael A. Taylor away the other day. Like it's just dudes on dudes on dudes, man. Wow, bro, that, it was that's crazy. impressive, man. Yeah, we got so I played indie ball last summer and I was able to. I was in Kansas City, and I was able to go see MJ play and and like uh, Bobby Wood Jr. and stuff. And it's like, wow, man, these kids are good, bro. Like they're really yeah. good, man, and young too, man. Young. There's yeah. a lot of young, young talent, man, coming up, and it's it's unbelievable to watch, and it's cool to see kids from where we're from. You know what I'm saying? Continue to see right yeah. and continue to push, exactly. push that forward. So tell me now. Let's get into the fun stuff, bro. Because I wanna, I wanna hear like, yo, what's what, what what's some of the craziest things you've seen, especially being in the in the video room. Like, what are some of the craziest bombs you've seen hit? Like, what are the? I know you're seeing these numbers too on these screens, bro. Like, what what kind of numbers are these young kids putting up nowadays, bro? Talk to me. I mean, Omaha's a band box, bro. <laughs> like the ball flies there, flies flies like I, I i joke around a little bit but i'm kind of serious at the same time it's like yo, if you see if you see uh a pitcher in triple a omaha and he has like a three or a four year eight that dude show <laughs> because there, young, there, there are some fly, yeah there there are some fly balls that go over there that you're just like bro like flies like 450 foot bombs 460 foot bombs uh we had we had uh, Jacoby Jones for for a hot minute uh, early, the beginning of last year, and it wasn't even in Omaha, but he went dead center first week of the season, four sixty. I'm like, good God, bro, <laughs> what's going on here? 460, yeah, bro, nuts, bro. Four dead center. Oh, that's not real, know, bro. That's the, not real. The, the balls, 
You think the balls that's made a difference? That, you think about, you think I don't know. That's what I'm I'm there. I'm doing everything. I had track man <laughs> on me. I was like <laughs> He said I was doing everything right, bro. I don't know. I'm, but, sorry. I'm, just, I'm showing the other guy. Like, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> what's the exit below? What's the exit below on that thing, bro? Oh man, I mean, what it was that? see. One, that's the thing. One hundred five, one hundred five at thirty. Not nah, more, more. It was, oh, right, it, right. it was, it was probably a little bit more. But the crazy part is that wasn't even the highest exit below that I, that I had seen, like, like on a dashboard. Like the the highest exit velos I had ever seen so far have, uh, like, personally, me being there were. It was O'Neill Cruz in bro. Indy. He had, bro, bro, he had bro. like a line drive, like one sixteen. <laughs> Guy's an animal. Listen, to me, uh, listen to me. I can't believe you brought that name up. That guy's not a human being, bro. No, 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 no. I, I disagree. That doesn't count. That guy should be like not, not put into human status, bro. I played against that guy, and I saw that guy walk into the field, and it's, it's kind of the, at least Bruce, Bruce Bochy is like big. This guy's like yeah. this. But he looks like Kevin Durant, bro. Flacco. Kevin, Fla- Kevin yeah. Durant, but runs flies, bro. It looks like yeah, he's gliding. Flies. He looks like an avatar just <laughs> And you're like, no. <laughs> That's a great comparison. Literally, he's not real. For, he's not from this world, bro. He's And then he hits the ball. He hit a home run against us in Hartford, right? So the ball in right field, it flies because it's a short porch. Left field is good, but dead center, there's, it's just dead. Like, literally, it's 380, bro. It's not that deep. But it just doesn't go. Bro, this guy hit a line drive that if the pitcher put his hand up, he could have caught it. Bro, play. So he hit it like a golf like ball. A... <laughs> bro, just just like a golf ball, bro. It stayed low like that. And our center fielder takes, like, one of those steps in and then starts going back. And, bro, the ball just kept going and going. And, and then, then he, and it, I guess it, it was a, it was the turnaround it, sprint, yeah, into yeah, yeah. A slow jog, and he's like, yeah, that that. Ain't and back. I guess he stayed way too inside of it. The swing was way too inside, so he actually had a little flare to it. Poor guy, he probably hit it wrong, um, <laughs> bro. So you see it start going up, and then about halfway, you see it just like start fading like that, and it never stopped, brother. I really don't know where the ball landed, dude. It was it got this small. So fast, alien, bro. bro. He's an alien. He's an alien. alien he is an alien. Sure. And then he goes in shorts. Like, bro, do you see the numbers? He's throwing 100 miles an hour across the diamond. 